We turn now to Memphis, where a woman was actually sentenced to six years in prison for trying to register to vote. 44-year-old activist Pamela Moses was apparently still on felony probation, making her ineligible to vote without first completing her probation, then getting a signed certificate restoring her right to vote by a correction official. But with a judge saying one thing, probation saying another, and Tennessee's confusing voting laws for those with felonies, Moses, who relied on the information provided to her by probation, unknowingly committed a crime and was prosecuted for what amounted to a simple mistake. All right, I've got uh, Pamela's uh, supporter and friend, Don Harrington, the executive director of Free Hearts. Thank you so much for coming on, Don. I know that we were expecting uh, Pamela's attorney to come on, but I know that there's technical difficulties. So we'll have this conversation with you. Listen, this case really hits home for me because I live a few miles away from the county that sentenced Crystal Mason to five years for a, a vote that never even counted. And we've had her on the show uh, along with her attorney and there's the same fact pattern. Uh, voting laws for returning citizens are so confusing and by design that even state officials can't get it right. And that's to the detriment of people like Pamela, like Crystal, like so many others who happen to be black um, that get prosecuted uh, for making a mistake for something that was unintentional. Um, Tell me about Pamela and tell me about how uh, you got involved with her case. Okay, for having me. First of all, um, Pamela is being punished for Tennessee's mistakes. And I think that's very important as a top line of this conversation. Um, Free Hearts is an organization that's led by formerly incarcerated women that provides support, education, and advocacy for families impacted by incarceration. And in our work, we um, restore voting rights, work with uh, people all across the state in every single county, um, over a thousand people with restoring their voting rights. And you're right, like it is the most, arguably the most complicated law of any state and what we found in the whole process is that, you know, the state and the court clerks, they often make mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. We have seen, we've gotten so much misinformation as far as like people being told that they were not eligible to vote. So the fact that the state made a mistake in the case of Pamela Moses is not an anomaly, but the fact that she's being prosecuted is um so we got involved with pamela's case we um are the nashville hub of the participatory defense network and we have a participatory defense meeting um weekly where we work with families at any stage of the judicial system and um, when i ran into her in memphis i was telling her she should uh come to the meeting and so i was with her um throughout the trial and, you know, the state uh, testified and there was also a letter, but they testified at the trial that they made the mistake. Um, the judge and the sentencing was trying to say that she tricked them. However, the testimony at trial was that probation went to the back, did research, called another office, double checked, and then they they checked and then they checked the um they checked the paper documents and then they came back out front with the paper signed what we have to understand about this the felony she was convicted of is falsifying entry on an election document for submitting a form that was entirely and had to be entirely filled out by a probation officer and a clerk. She didn't write on it. She didn't sign it. She just asked for it, which is her right under the law. And she turned it in what they gave her um, because the probation office uh, later said that they made a mistake. They testified to it. They wrote it in a letter, but now she's being punished for their mistake. Don, um, I'm, I'm getting word that we have Pamela's attorney, Dr. Bede Anyanwu. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I know you had some 
technical difficulties, but I, I, we're talking about how uh, Pamela's case is similar to that of Crystal Mason uh, here out of Fort Worth, um, who also got prison time. Um, she got convicted and sentenced to five years for a vote that didn't count. And what is similar in these two cases is that with Crystal Mason, she submitted um, a, 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 a form that she was supposed to, that she was directed to. And on the bottom, when fine print, it said, you know, you, that you aren't convicted of a crime, that you aren't currently on, you know, parole or probation. And being, you know, told that she could vote is what she relied on. Here in Pamela's case, she actually had a certificate of restoration of her voting rights by probation. In addition to the registration form to vote, submitted that in, in all good faith, right? Believing that she could actually do that and then got prosecuted for it based on someone's mistake. Please chime in, Counselor. Well, um, I'm baffled just like any other person um, who, who listened and heard what happened in Shelby County uh, in convicting uh, this lady, not just convicting her, but stating that she falsified a document. And I have looked at the definition of falsification. It does not fit meet the, 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 what they said she did. As Ms. Dunn is uh, narrating here, if you look at what this lady did, this lady went to the appropriate authority, which is the mm -hmm. Department of Corrections. Department of Corrections is the umbrella department for the uh, probation department, parole department. So at the end of the day, they are the keeper of records. They are the ones who would actually mm -hmm. state that she has completed her sentence. And she went ahead based on the information she received from the appropriate agency. Right. Going to the election office, now asking them to do what? This is the information I have from this agency that is in charge. Now, right. could you now fill this document for me so I can proceed? So she did not at any time, she did not at any time circumvent the system. She followed the legal process. She act. She That's took the, the necessary steps to ensure. And this lady, right, right. She. So I was going to say she took the necessary steps to ensure that she was eligible. She went to a judge. He said one thing. Um, she didn't believe it, so she went to probation. Probation told her she was cleared. She took the proper channels in order to ensure that she could actually vote. And and I don't under. I don't know anybody that's willing to risk their freedom for a vote. It just isn't that serious. People in prison don't want to go back to prison, especially for a vote. So it's it's preposterous that the argument now is, well, she she tricked probation into filling out a document. If she was able to trick probation, then they don't need to hold that job anymore. Uh Don, your thoughts. No, that department need to that department need to be eviscerated based on what the judge who is the reader of people's mind this judge knows what you're thinking right now, knows what uh, Ms. Dawn is thinking right now, knows what I'm thinking right now. That is the, this is the person that I am afraid of. This judge who is saying what Ms. Moses did, tricking the probation person into signing a document. She does not know what Ms. Moses was thinking. And for her to, for him to specifically say that she, he, she tricked. She made, he made mention of that word so many times. You tricked, you tricked, you tricked. Right. And he no, was and, not and, there. And here's the thing, He counselor. didn't know what happened. 
Here's and it makes no sense. And you're right. Um, when you're trying to prove someone's intent, you, you aren't in their mind, but you can judge their intent by their actions. And again, she was taking all the proper action in order to make sure that she was following the law. I know that you're appealing her conviction. Can you tell us where, where that stands currently? Well, uh, uh, currently, uh, there will be a, a motion to vacate the, the judgment that was entered for a new trial because the evidence does not support the verdict. So, and that is set, I think, um, this month or thereabout or next, I, I, can, I don't know the exact date now. But after that, then a notice of appeal will be entered uh, with the Court of Criminal Appeals. Uh, and then we go from there. But will this case All be right, appealed? Attorney, yes, Dr. this case will be appealed. All right, Dr. Bede Anwanu, Don Harrington, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate you.